Hey everybody, welcome back. Today in the shed we're making a handle for a double-sided axe head that I got from a friend. So here we, you can see the star pattern on the end of this piece closest to us on the camera. Um, basically I'm trying to get rid of some valleys, right? So when you split this stuff, uh, you tend to get these hollowed out sections and hopefully they're bigger than the final product that you need. But you can see I'm working down on the other end trying to get rid of that little valley section. It's about gone there. Now I'm going to flip the piece over and start trying to do the same thing on this end. And you'll notice that I get a big hang up there, like a hangnail, and stop and spin it around. So that's the game you got to play with the um, draw knives, is you want to be careful that you're not hogging out material that's moving across the, um, the, the grain of the piece you need, right? So if you start to get big sections... Uh, carved out you need to spin the wood around and try it from the other side and you need to make sure your draw your uh, draw knives are nice and sharp so um, I periodically stop and uh, take these over to the buffer all right that's looking pretty clean on this side so I'm probably gonna flip this thing over in a minute here the end uh, closest to me right now is the intended end for the axe head to sit on and it has the dimensions, the inner uh, dimension of the axe head drawn on the end of it. Here I'm just trying to work a bunch of material off one side of the handle. Um, trees as it happens are not straight, no matter how much you think they are. And so in this case I'm trying to deal with what essentially is warp. So we're going to end up sanding a fair amount of material off the center section on one side and on the other side we're going to end up having to uh, pull a lot of material off. Now I'd much rather work with the draw knives I've discovered than on the sander. You can see the amount of material that's getting dumped on the shop floor here. It is considerable and it's much much faster uh, to do this with the draw knives than it is on the sander. Alright so here we go. It's close enough to pattern so I went ahead and took one of my other axes off the wall and kind of drew a pattern on what we've got left here and now we're just cutting that out. A strange thing here is when I cut this piece there was kind of an offset so it was like it was under stress. Hopefully that won't show back up again in the piece as it ages because that would mean that it would warp obviously. need a bigger bandsaw but it did okay nice part is you can get uh, wood and metal blades for a 62 and a quarter 62 and a half bandsaw and here we go back into the post vise to do a little more draw knife work I thought um, but the reality is that I can only work that end piece there because of the way the grain is working so I just decided nah, it might not be worth it. Let's just go ahead and move over to the sander. So here we're trying to get the sides parallel first to the pattern on the end, right? Because nothing matters if the blade is not pointed in the same direction as the handle, then you've totally screwed up. So that's all I'm trying to do here is establish the flat sides of the handle. And also start doing some bulk removal of the domed side. So you'll see me spending a lot of time in the center on one side and less on the other. Okay, so here we're switching over to doing the oval. Uh, this axe head had the, probably the longest and thinnest um, through piece that goes through the axe head of anything I've played with so far. Um, kind of interesting to try to profile to that. So basically here I'm just trying to work down to the profile that I've drawn using a pencil from the inside of the axe head itself. And periodically again working on that dome on one side and the offset on the other. And when I get close enough here we'll start to see me putting the axe head on. So there's that dome side. I'm trying to shave a lot of material off that side. Alright, get to the axe head you. Yeah, okay, here we go. Start pounding the axe head on there. 
doesn't fit initially. That's not a surprise. Now, when you're working these pieces, remember the um, the end of the piece, the wood part, right, is going to be, you want that to be as big as you can get it and still fit through the axe head. And then you have to get the rest of the piece at least that size. So you're really trying to make the end piece where the axe head goes all the same dimension all the way to wherever it seats. In this case, because this particular axe head, the uh, the hole through it is actually tapered like a tomahawk. Um, so, you, right, unlike a hammer where you've got an hourglass shape and the um, the portion of the handle closest to where it seats is pointing in and then you just splay the other end out. That's not the case here. So I want this whole thing as big as I can get it and still get it through the axe head so that I can uh, um, wedge it open as much as possible to fit and stay put. All right, so we're still doing profile work here, trying to get the overall handle shape I want. Kind of pointless to do this as a kind of an Adirondack handle. It was fun. The grain down on that end really wanted to be in that shape. Um, but as a double-headed axe, I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of sense. So here we're just trying to get a little bit of slack belt done with what I've got with the plate and still on the unit. And that's about it. You'll see me looking at the straightness of it, such as it is. And there's the final product, sharpened and all set and burned and burnished.